the surface we paint on affects very much the, the way we paint and probably it affects our style. Um, so we really need to think about what an experiment with the surfaces that we use to paint on. I've tried many things over the years. I think one of the best things I've found works for me is um, working on a gesso board. It works out very inexpensive. You can buy loads of prepared boards online and it, you go out there and it's a minefield. You just don't know which one to go for. But um, gesso on a board is a very inexpensive way and of painting. I buy my sheets of MDF from the local woodyard and they'll cut it up for me. It comes in an eight foot by four foot sheet and I usually have it cut into 24 inch squares, which gives me, hang on, <laughs> it's eight, isn't it? Yeah, it gives me eight squares. So then I, once I've prepared those, I can cut them up into sizes that I want. So for example, a 24 inch square will give me nine, eight inch squares but you can, you can play around and do your own measurements. But to prepare the board, that's the important part. The first thing I do is to give it a good sanding back and front. I use a, quite a coarse uh, sanding block. It doesn't take long, but do wear a mask. Then the next thing I do is to seal the back. Now this actually is important, and I do know a lot of artists don't even think about the back of the board, but this will absorb moisture. So what you need to do is to seal it. And for that, I use any old household paint will do. Um, I use a matte one also. It, it makes it look a little bit nice and tidy on the back. So first thing I do then is to seal it. And I use a roller, a roller in a tray. And I'll probably give just two coats and that is well sealed. And then for the other side, having sanded it, I will dilute my first coat of gesso and probably apply that with a roller because it, it saves an awful lot of time. I've tried several gessos. I like, um, I've, I've been using the Robesons, which is a very good one, but I've just recently bought, and I haven't tried it yet, but I have just recently on recommendation of another artist, I've bought the Golden Gesso. And what I do with my boards is that I diluted it 25% water for the first coat, a second coat with a roller, and then the third coat, you could even do a third coat with a roller, but that gives a completely different texture. I personally like to use a brush and that will give you a rougher texture. So when you're painting, you can see the brush marks of the gesso underneath. So having done that, you then have to leave it a little while to, to make sure it's properly dry. Um, do read the manufacturer's instructions because they all vary. Some they recommend leaving it for probably a week. And with gessos, again, they vary as well. First of all, do not buy a cheap one because you don't want your lovely painting peeling off the board. It's worth investing. It goes a long way. I think um, a tub this size will probably cover 13 square metres. I might be wrong, I did read that somewhere. Um, so yeah, you can get, so the gessos vary. Michael Harding do a non-absorbent one, which would make your surface probably a little bit more slippery. Um, the paint would slide around a bit more, but, but if that's your style and it suits you, then that works out well. You can, of course, make your own gesso, which is something I've done in the past, but do you know what? When you can buy it. So I've still got a bag of rabbit skin glue, Gilda's whiting, and you boil up the rabbit skin glue and you add oil and you add the whiting and add, uh, you know what, and the house used to stink. So now I just, just go online and get a decent one. Now the other option of course is um, canvas boards. Again, you can make your own. I buy a roll, this roll here uh, is 10 metres and it's a metre wide. It costs me about 200 pounds, which is, sounds a lot of money, but actually that was one of the cheaper ones. You, you can pay well over a thousand pounds for a decent quality linen, but it's worth experimenting with that too, because you can buy linen uh, from, I think it's Jackson's or Ken Bromley, 
Uh, you can buy it by the metre. And you've got fine linen, medium linen, coarse linen, you've got cotton duck, you've got primed, you've got unprimed. But I tend to buy the primed canvas um, because they use a good proprietary um, gesso on them and they, they're fine. So with the canvas, this is, um, this is an off cut. And what I do then with the board, don't forget, I still seal the back first, but on the other side, I'll give it a coat of PVA and let that dry completely so that it stops any absorbency. And then I'll give it another coat of PVA. Again, you can use a roller if you're doing a lot of them or spread it out with a, a, a bit of card. And then you glue your canvas on. I usually allow a quarter of an inch all the way around because the canvas will shrink when you put it on. So you've put your canvas onto your board and then you can either use a rolling pin or again a squeegee and work from the middle and push the glue to the edges and I, when I'm doing them I do a whole pile and stack them up and when they've dried I just turn them over and then with a cutting mat I just cut down and they're nice and trim. Another alternative to canvas is um, butter muslin that's quite a nice texture but once that's on, I give that probably three coats of gesso. It, it, you still get the texture, but it does fill in the holes a bit because it can be quite an open weave. And the other thing I use sometimes is an old t linen tea towel. Um, you can also scan the charity shops and see what fabrics they've got in there. Because even cotton sheeting works um, quite well. And... I did buy a linen dress once. It was a horrible dress, but it was only two pounds. It was beautiful, fine linen. I thought, oh, yeah, I love that. So I, I used that, cut it up, and I used that to cover my boards. And that, that again, that's very inexpensive. Now, when you've got the canvas, something that I have done in the past is when I'm traveling, is to um, just take canvas and a couple of boards with me. And then when I go out, I've taped this, actually I haven't stretched that well enough. I've, I've taped this piece of canvas on, I can see now it's got wrinkles in it. Usually I put a big strong piece on, really pull it down and tape it. So you can tape your um, canvas to the board. You could even divide that up with masking tape if you wanted to do some small studies. Take that out with your paint on it. And then when I got back to the apartment in the evening, this is a board, I just peeled it off and stuck it up on the wall to dry and then when I went home all I had was a pile of canvases in fact um on a trip to Greece once this is one up here I don't know if you can see it this is one of the ones that I did on canvas and, and mounted it just just glued it onto some good thick board when I came home and, and it framed up really well in fact the the trip to Greece I did I went with a friend and we went for a week and all I took was hand luggage because I posted my paints in advance and I took a roll of canvas, a couple of boards and just hand luggage, a couple of pairs of shorts, sandals and the necessaries, you know what I mean. And that was it. And that, you know, so you don't have to take everything with you when you go away. All I had in my, oh, and I posted my palette knife as well because I thought they're not having that. <laughs> What else have we got here? Yeah, we've got um again you can buy the boards. This is um this is a Jackson's board, it's a lovely fine linen again on MDF, and they're, they're not particularly heavy, so you you could take a whole load of these away with you if you went away painting. And a, another alternative is mount board. If you go to your local framers and ask them. That's the middle bit from the, the mounts they cut for watercolours. And if, if you can ask them if they've got any off cuts, these work out and they're very, very light as well. So again, you can either gesso them or you can, you could, you could glue a fabric linen or canvas onto it. But I wouldn't go much bigger than this. This is a 10 by 12 board because they are quite flexible and you wouldn't be able to work much bigger than that. So that, that works quite well. The, um, Canvas. I don't know where I got this from. This is a beautiful, the quite expensive um, linen canvas. That, that was a really nice surface to work on. I can't remember where I got it from, but it's it's really heavy. I wouldn't want to travel with too many of those with me. 
but again it's nice to invest in a few different qualities and things that you can try i've also bought for myself and this is a very smooth surface this is a it's a gesso board it's very smooth and it's very rigid very rigid so that that's a very nice surface to work on as well i've had people i've had people come to classes and they've been and they've bought cheap canvases well the reason is they're cheap is they've probably only got one coat of primer on and people are disappointed because they start to paint and the paint soaks in um there's probably nothing wrong with a canvas they just need a bit more gesso so if you've got some canvases you've been disappointed with get some gesso and just give it a couple of coats and see how you get on with that another thing i bought a whole load of uh, canvas boards once for a painting course that i was doing I didn't like them at all. Uh, they were very coarse, the, the brushes dragged on them. And so again, a couple of coats of gesso and, and they were fine. They're still not my favourite surface, but uh, now I've gessoed them. I've also cut a few of them up as well to make smaller sizes because they're quite useful. I mean, if you're not precious with them, then you don't feel like you're wasting anything. So anyway, I hope that's helped you and um, if you've got any other ideas of travelling away and what you paint on, I'd love to hear them. <laughs> Thank you.